Come on in. Hey, take a load off. It's me, Stefan, for another episode of Stefan Reads Line News here on Small in Japan, uh, the podcast slash YouTube channel where we talk about how it's like to be small in Japan. Yeah, uh, I am Stefan. I'm represented by Yoshimoto Kogyo, which is the largest entertainment company in the country, except uh, they don't really do anything for me. But that's beside the point. My misgivings are not part of the show. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do so by following this page, this uh, YouTube channel, and leaving comments or whatever. Uh, giving the video a thumbs up or whatever, I guess. I'm not good at this uh, stuff. And you can also uh, find us on Twitter at small underscore in underscore Japan or find me on Twitter at Stefan underscore Tetsu. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash small in Japan, but that's going to be changed here in a couple days as I figure things out. Alrighty. So in case you don't know, Line is the biggest messaging app in the country in J- of Japan. Uh, it's also big in Korea, but... We are in a Korean podcast. Uh, but Line also has its own news tab now, which like aggregates all these different news sources, and they generally don't give you much of anything of worth. But uh, I like to read the articles that it gives me every single day on this here uh, YouTube vi- video uh, segment. So let's get to it. Today is August 27th, 2022. Uh, in case this is your first time listening, uh, Line News gives you two rows of uh, big old pictures with little headlines underneath them, and then three actual news headlines sandwiched between those that are pretty much hidden and out of the way so no one actually looks at them. Uh, we'll get to those news stories in a second, but let's start with the top news stories as given to me by the great algorithm of Line News. So, story number one is a uh, follow-up, I guess, on something we covered yesterday uh, on Kagawa Teruyuki's continued uh, troubles brought on by his uh, uh, way with women, I guess we should say. Uh, why, why, uh, why are we beating around the bush? He's, he's pretty much kind of a uh, sexual assaulter. So yesterday we covered how his NHK TV show wasn't going to uh, do anything about his appearances, so he's going to continue to appear on that. And today, Toyota, yes, that that car company, Toyota, uh, in which uh, for which he's been st- like starring in like a series of commercials for, like as like a interviewer kind of. It's kind of a really weird like video series of like him talking to like Toyota staff members and stuff about the new car technology and stuff they're putting together. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, he's been in a series of ads there, uh, and Toyota, while well, they say that, uh, it's tie-ins on men, so it's very regrettable, very, uh, bad, uh, they, while well, they say that, they are not planning on an, uh, er, forcing him into an early retirement from this whole, uh, editor-in-chief ad campaign thing that he's doing. Um, so which is, it's... This is um, kind of a shift uh, with how Japan generally deals with scandals in the entertainment industry. I'd say that probably if this happened like a couple years ago, um, he probably all of his ads would have probably been uh, taken off the air, and he his show appearances would probably all be cut and uh, or his face blurred out. That's always a fun option. Um, but in this case, um, it looks like he's not going to be feeling any. Like super ill effects of uh, his sex scandal here, which is really interesting. Uh, maybe it's just because people are getting lazy and they don't want to have to reshoot million dollars, a million dollars worth of ads or uh, whatever the case is. But yeah, I guess Kagawa, Kagawa Teruyuki is still going to be doing his thing. So congrats to him on uh, escaping uh, cancellation, I guess. So, story number two is literally just the uh, advertisement for a TV show that already aired. Now, if you've been listening for a while, you know that this is one of Lion News' favorite articles to give me. Uh, just literally just summaries of TV shows that were on the air earlier in the day or the night before. Um, so today, we have a story from a TV show that was on Thursday. Th- yeah, Thursday night. Talk... Talk, talking, talk, talkings. 
I have no idea how to say that, but that's it's Fuji. T- it's a TV show on Fuji Terabi. Anyways, uh, the MC of the show is Sashi Hararino, former AKB member. Yes, I guess the algorithm thinks that I am back in 2012 and uh, obsessed with the goings on and uh, the former Kami Seven. So on this show, apparently, uh, a couple of Johnny's members were guesting, uh, and uh, she talked about the. Uh, the person she most wants to give advice about variety shows to uh, in the Japanese entertainment world, Gain Okai. And that is apparently Muse. There is literally nothing more I can say about this article. It's just a summary of what happened on the TV show. Uh, if you want to know more, watch the show itself. Uh, I'm sure there are ways to get it online, although maybe not legally, uh, which is something that should probably happen by now. Anyways, uh, yeah, so those are the top two stories. Let's go down to the second row of fluff pieces. And, uh, whoop, we have more uh, summaries of TV shows. So that's great. Story number three is a uh, story about the latest episode of Matsumoto, uh, Hitoshi Matsumoto's uh, Sake no Tsumami ni Naru Hanashi. So just like his... Uh, um, downtown Matsumoto-san's talk show, where it's pretty much just like a bunch of like celebrities sitting around the table with Matsumoto-san while drinking, although so in some cases I'm not sure if it's actually alcoholic drinks, just like fake looking drink stuff, because uh, a lot of the times they film these shows in the afternoon, and people have work afterwards. Um, so anyways, um, Fujiwara's Fujimon, Fujimoto-san was on this show, uh, and, uh, they talked, and it apparently, according to this article, uh, th- what was revealed on the show, uh, caused quite the stir on the internet. So, there's been a rumor going around for a little bit that Fujimon and his ex-wife, Yukina, uh, have been banned from Disneyland after an incident. Uh, there's apparently, this news story has kind of been going around for a while, um, and uh, Matsumoto-san and Fujimon talked about it on this episode of uh, Tsumami ni Naru Hanashi uh, yesterday, actually. Um, and Fujimon explains that, no, what happened is they were sitting in a uh, in an area wa- watch, trying to watch a parade, but the people in front of him were standing up. Uh, and uh, he told the person in front of him to stand up, and that's when the person told him that he was sitting in a standing zone so he should be standing up too. Um, and from there, things kind of bloomed out of control in terms of the story itself. And it became a rumor that he almost got into a fight with this guy and thus got banned from Disney. But he says that is not the case. And uh, the news story uh, does not reflect what actually happened. Anyways, this all came up because... Uh, it was in the news that he and his ex-wife, Yukina, took their two daughters to Disneyland for, he says, his daughter's birthday. Now, in America and stuff, like, we, we get lots of, like, people happily co-parenting their kids after divorces and stuff and managing to make things work. But in Japan, normally what happens is, like, one parent, like, completely just takes control of the kid and the other parent just never sees the kid again. And it's a really sad situation, so... It's kind of like unusual, uh, and the the people in the studio also kind of react like it's kind of unusual to see a uh, couple of exes uh, taking their kids to Disneyland together. Um, but it looks like uh, things have worked out. Fujimoto is not, in fact, banned from Disney. So uh, look forward to more pictures of Fujimoto in Disneyland, I guess. Um, anyway, story number four, the last of the fluff stories, also is a summary of something that happened on the t- on this exact same TV show. So, in addition to Fujimon, uh, Shibuya Nagisa, yes, the f- the uh, the H not HKT NMB member, Matt's gonna kill me for getting that one wrong. The NMB member um, was on NMB, of course, is Yoshimoto's uh, Yoshimoto's AKB group. Uh, they took over one of Yoshimoto's Wakate theaters in Osaka. Yes, the NMB theater used to be the theater where all the Wakate, the young comedians in Osaka, performed uh, way back in the day. That's why it's precisely across the street from NGK, Yoshimoto's biggest like grand theater. Um, 
but anyways, that's besides the point. But uh, Nagisa was on uh, this episode of uh, Tsumami ni Naru Hanashi. And she w- she talked to Matsumoto-san about how she was so frustrated after she lost the Ippon Joshi Grand Prix. The, so the, the woman version of Ippon. That she cried after the, uh, after the show. Anyway, she also talked about how... It's always been a goal of hers to get to be followed by Matsumoto-san on Twitter, to which Matsumoto-san says, "Aren't I following you already?" And she she says, "Yeah," and Matsumoto-san <laughs> isn't really following anybody, uh, and it turns out she's the only, or as she says, she's the only, she's the only woman for Matsumoto. I guess is the best way to say, it. to say it. I think. Yeah, so she's Matsumoto. She's the only person who Matsumoto follows who's a... Uh, that's a long way of saying it. She's the only girl that Matsumoto-san follows on Twitter. That's the way to say it, I guess. Uh, yeah, so uh, good for her. Hope, I guess hopefully she'll win next year's Ippon Joshi Grand Prix if they do it. Uh, and that was your news summer... The, man, today's top four... Top well, one of the four was a news story, I guess. The other three were all pretty much just like summaries of stuff that happened on TV, like last night. So uh, we got a really, really weird bunch of news stories today. Anyways, uh, I've been blabbing on for a while now. Let's go to the top three actual news stories today. Uh, as you know, line buries the actual news. So here we go. Story number one. Uh, we didn't cover this on the show before because this happened before I even got back to Japan for my year-long sojourn in America. Uh, but, uh, the Shiratoko uh, cruise, uh, sightseeing cruise accident, uh, there... So there was a like a cruise like a it was like it's like a uh, not whale watching but like a nature watching cruise out of Shirotoko up in the north part of Hokkaido, uh, up in the northern part the mo- northernmost tip of Japan. Uh, it's like a world heritage site. It's uh, pretty nice. Um, honestly, though, it's not as wild I think as the most wild parts of America. But maybe that's just me. I've never been, but from what I've seen, it's still pretty. Uh, in, I don't know what's the right word to say, industrialized, uh, touristy, either way. Anyways, uh, there was this boat accident, the boat sank, and uh, a bunch of people died. Uh, 26 people, in fact, uh, died, um, or went missing. Uh, everyone, I think this entire boat, uh, they were able to find 14 bodies, but 12 of the bodies are still missing, and they think, and this is where the newest story uh, comes in, uh, that these bodies were swept away by the current and they're now in Russian waters, which obviously are uh, hard to get to at this point. A couple of the bodies have already been recovered in Russia, um, but, but they think that mo- the rest of the bodies are somewhere in Russian waters, the cold, frigid Russian Ocean, um, and it's hard for Japan to search the Sakharin region for uh, the bodies because obviously the world and Russia are currently embroiled in a conflict. Uh, so hopefully that works out for everybody. Um, it's a bad situation. Uh, feel for all the people who who lost a member, uh, a loved one uh, on this boat. And of course I feel for the people who were on this nice vacation when the boat they were on sank and they all died in the frigid frozen waters. Uh, story number two also about Russia. Uh, I wonder what's in the news. Russia, so apparently, uh, thanks to all the restrictions, Russia is producing more oil than it can actually really sell. So to get rid of the the Amato gas, the, the, the extra gas that they have, they've just been burning it. Um, which doesn't really seem like it's uh, a good situation. That's not great for the environment. But, uh... That I guess the restrictions are working. They can't just like pump gas slower. I guess they just have to pump the same amount of gas and hope for the best, and they just burn off whatever is extra. I have no idea what. I am not an oil expert. Uh, to just in case you couldn't figure that out, so I have no idea. Uh, moving on to the last story, story number three. Uh, we can move from two stories about Russia to a story that happened in Osaka, where some a woman was stabbed on the street. Uh, by a guy that who was who was arrested. This guy is uh, apparently or was apparently her former lover boyfriend, I guess. And they got into a fight on the street in Sakai in Osaka, and uh, he stabbed her to death. So uh, that's not 
nice. Uh, not much to say. It's just a stabbing. Uh, they describe that he stabbed her with a fifteen, a fifteen centimeter, centi, yeah, fifteen, a fifteen centimeter knife, um, and they left it on the crime scene. And they found him, and he's under arrest. And uh, and uh, he apparently, when they interviewed him, said uh, that. He didn't, he doesn't recall whether he wanted to kill her or not, but obviously he, he killed her. So make your own conclusions there. Okay, so that's about it for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. It was kind of a weird show, uh, but that's how things go sometimes. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we have better news stories. Until then, I am Stefan saying uh, don't stab your girlfriend and forget about it. <laughs>